Right now, for more on the developments in South, South Sudan, we're joined in studio by John Gashia, an expert in South Sudan affairs. Join, John, thank you for joining us. I'll begin by asking you, this round of talks uh, was, of course, part of an agreement in Addis Ababa about a fortnight ago. Mm -hmm. uh, a ceasefire agreed in the same deal has been repeatedly flouted. Uh, can this delay now be viewed as evidence of waning commitment? Uh, thank you. I it's quite evident that um, both parties have been playing to the gallery. Both parties have not, in my view, have not really committed to the peace agreement. And I think what you're seeing now is the, the after effect that both parties are too busy internally trying to reorganize. And the peace talks was just, an, uh, shall I say, uh, an exit clause at that time. So I wouldn't say there is um, this is indicative of a, not much of a change mm. in the position. All right. Now, what, what options are open to IGAD, uh, to IGAD to end the conflict that has been raging uh, for over a year now? Yes. Let me put it this way. I think IGAD has to bite the bullet. For the last one year, IGAD has kind of played, in, in my view, an, an, you know, uh, a softy, softy approach. And it has not really put its mouth where its uh, money is. And they have not held the two principles to account. And they have not really... Uh, um, uh, created what we call red lines. Right. Both parties are putting red lines themselves, but IGAD has not really uh, put that uh, pressure as was expected. And I think this is an, you know, an indictment in my view that IGAD seems not to have the clout that ought to have had to push the two parties to an agreement. Right. Now on Thursday, of, of course, we heard that one of Riek Mashar's senior officials defected from the group and received, obviously, a hero's welcome from the other side. What impact uh, does this have on Mashar's rebel group? It's, a, it's an interesting development. And there have been views all along that perhaps Riyak Mashar didn't have the control, did not have the overall, as, I, as we say, command and control of his uh, faction. And this, uh, uh, this new person joining the government is an indication of perhaps within Riyak Mashar's group there isn't that much of cohesion at the moment. Right. But I think it's a bit too early to say because there are people within perhaps Alvis Q's government who might also be weighing their options. Right. Yeah. All right, finally, John Gashia, what should happen if the talks completely fail to deliver a solution? My God, that would be a disaster for the region, that would be a disaster for Africa, and that would be a disaster for the people of South Sudan. Now, the bigger question will be, will the international community allow the peace agreement to collapse? I hope not, because if that were to happen, then we would have an upside of violence in the region. And I think for EGAD, the issues, security, uh, small arms, conflict and refugees, that would be a disaster. I'm hoping that perhaps the international community with the EGAD will now this time put their foot down and put their money where their mouth are and bite the bullet and hold the two of them accountable. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much for that. We've been speaking here live in studio to John Gashier, uh, who is, of course, an expert in South Sudan affairs. It's time.